Today, I want to explore the number of system calls that different applications make to perform a simple task that is read a file from disk and print it on the standard output, i.e. the screen. So in order to do that, we're going to use a, a beautiful tool that is called strace. And strace will invoke the process, the program to be specific, and creates a process and will just capture every single system call that makes that that process makes to, of course, to the kernel. So what is a system call? A system call is the bridge that connects the user space, i.e. your normal peasant application, to this beautiful, luxurious kernel space, you know, the, uh, the, you know where you have elevated permissions. You know? And when you call a system call like a read, a write to disk, anything that has to do with sockets, with with files, with 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 hardware in general, even keyboards, and specific uh, scenarios, that require a system call, right? And system calls most of the time switches you as a process from this normal state to this another mode that's called kernel mode and there is a little bit of a cost it's not quite a context switch per se it's not you're not switching from one process to a completely different virtual memory space right to a different process no it's a mini tiny switch there is some registers being flushed in memory there is some stuff that is being read there is a cost it's not significant but there is a cost right as as if we always say we always say this right it's like oh it's just a call we i'm calling this back and it's just one call right and it takes like 3 milliseconds but if you do it 20,000 times like today's web pages you open it and there is like 20,000 30,000 calls for what right all of these adds up and it slows things down same thing with the system calls system calls if you do one sure that's not big deal but if you're doing 40,000 system calls, you know, that that kernel switch adds up, right? And that's what happens. That's one reason we, why we switched from we invented a new way of like of polling sockets like ePoll. The main problem with ePoll is it's very chatty with the systems like, ah, check, 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 check. It keeps checking stuff, right? So uh, we, IOU ring came into the picture to minimize, to cut the number of system calls. So, in this video, this ne, we're gonna describe how uh, a normal. We're gonna start with 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 different code, right? How a Python program or a script reads from file. How many system calls does it generate? How a Node.js does that, and how Bun does that, which is another JavaScript uh, library, not library framework. Runtime. I'm sorry. And there's finally, we're gonna do it. The good old fashioned C way, you know? And of course, you might know the answer. C will probably do the minimum number of system calls. Is this a measure of performance? Ish, maybe. But it just, this is just to open our eyes. This exercise is just to, you know, just to. There are so much stuff under the carpet. And this today, we just remove this carpet and see what's. What's inside it? What under it? You know, all this time you start, you attempt, you, you pretend to clean up, right? Did you just shove stuff under the carpet? This is time to just unveil this and see what's under the carpet. That's the goal, right? And there is no faster and slower. This, of course, depends on so many factors. So we're not gonna even go there. Let's go. Let's start this. Yeah, I'll do this so you can see my my reaction as I I do things. All right. Let's uh, clear. So here I am on my Ubuntu machine and I created some programs here. I have a file. Let's cat that. That input input. So we have a hello world, very simple file on disk. Right? And then we have um, read.c. This is the program that reads from file, just a read only. Right, and then seeks 
I don't think I don't think we even need to see. I just uh, I use Chat GPT to generate this, so it might be the might might not be the per, the best uh, way to write this code, but it's just an example anyway, right? So we're gonna do an if read, reading all of that stuff, and then we're writing it and we're freeing the buffer. Okay, so we're doing some pull stuff here. Then there is an MGS file, Michael Jackson. JavaScript file. We have an input reading from input reads and print. Does exactly the same thing. And now, finally, we have read.py, a Python file. Right? Same thing. Read input the text, print it. Right? You can see that the script is shorter for Python and JavaScript, but it's longer for C and it's going to be faster for C. Although we can rewrite this read to C. I was just lazy and I used ChatGPT. Probably I'm going to regret this. But yeah, let's do this. So to do that, first of all, I want to execute the command that flushes the file system page cache so that we don't have anything on the cache and we, we, don't want, we want the slowest possible approach. And this is how you do it. You, you call drop co uh, caches and you put the value of three here. Yeah, let me, let me remove myself here. So, so. Yeah, drop caches, and then let's run first. Let's run. Let's run the Python one. So to do that, we run sudo strace, which is a command should be available in every Linux machine. If it's not, you install it. And then you do dash c. I want to run Python three. In this particular case, that's what I have, and that's the path. We're passing argument. Because notice that the program that we are running you guys so the program we are running is actually not read.py it's python that's the executable and you have to understand that right that's what we're running now python 3 happened to take arguments and that argument happened to be a script that someone invented and python 3 the program that as far as the linux uh, kernel is concerned that is the actual program not this at all. That is just a parameter you're passing, right? So this is very, very important to understand it, right? The code is not this. The code is this, right? Python 3 is the executable. Program. So if I run it, you see, it's, ugh, it's feeling, you feel it. There's a slowdown. Yeah? And we got a whopping 662 system calls, right? And there are some errors 72 errors as a result uh, this is how many this is an average microsecond per call how long it takes and it's just a nice breakdown so uh, an f stat we, we can go through all of these and try to understand it i don't understand all every system call here right i know open at i know a map close you know i i know brk right i know m unmap new f stat so this is this is a, a method to give you the stats of the file right so we called it 216 times and you might think oh why are we calling the file 70 reading 70 times that file and technically you're reading other stuff too you just don't know it python as a program is reading not only of course just the program input the text no it needs to read configuration, packages, I don't know what. So there is so much other stuff is doing in the background, right? And that is why we're taking a whopping 7.6 millisecond. Is that right? Yes. 7,000... Uh, yeah, 7,000 uh, microseconds. So yeah, 7, 7 milliseconds. If you want to buy this by 1,000, you get 7 milliseconds. You know? Not bad, 7 milliseconds. It's not slow. Right, but, but it shows you, right? So now let's do the same thing, but let's do JavaScript now. Now let's do let's do Node.js first. All right, very similar. We're gonna call s trace dash c. And now we pass node, and then as a parameter we pass in read.mgs, which basically the modular JavaScript file. That's the new shiny ECM. I don't even know. What that is, MCA, MCA, MCA6, whatever. MJS. Yes, I forget things very quickly, you guys. So, yeah, we're going to read MJS, right? Again, the program we're running 
that double clicking it, we're actually running node, not this guy. That's just a parameter that happened to pass to the program, which is node. And node is doing all this mumbo jumbo parsing and, you know, jetting and doing all of that stuff to execute the JavaScript, right? The actual code is written in, pro in C, right? Node, node and at least C Python is written in C, right? Both of them. Okay, so now we're running that. So let's see how are we doing. 600 versus 800. Yikes. Node.js. What version is Node? Is that? I don't, I don't even know. Version 12. I'm sorry. This is very old. So probably <laughs> I just used the default. I'm sorry, guys. Right. This is very old Node. So the, you guys might, might yell at me, right? But it gives you an idea. You, you try it with the new node and see how many. It's like, I'm not going to install the latest one right now. I don't think this machine supports it. It's a very old machine. So again, this is not a performance. This is just to give you an idea, right? 800. And still, we're looking at 13 milliseconds. Yikes. Right? So we're seeing some writes going on here. It's like, why are we writing? Well, that's 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 the beauty of this stuff, you guys. I love this. You know, I sound as Spanish for that. I love it. I love it. So, so, so we absolutely love this stuff because write here means that we did some writes. But wait a minute, I'm just reading, right? The actual code, the script just reads, but Node itself it does caching. It does write to disk. It read it, update the package to JSON. Who knows? It does all this stuff. And the beauty here is just, this is just looking at the program naked and catching it off guard. And that's the beauty of this stuff. So it took 13 milliseconds, right? And 800. So of course, way more calls, right? Uh, do we do a, a hot cache? Let's do, let's do a hot one, right? Uh, a hot cache node, we got 807, actually more for some reason. And you can see like, this number is not guaranteed, right? And the, the values will go up and down based on the cache, based on billions other stuff going on in the operating system. But yeah, let's do bun. Bun. How to do bun? Let's first clear. Did we clear? Yes. Now let's do bun. Bun. Show me bun. Oh, that doesn't look good. Yikes, bun. Bun is not doing very well, you guys. Nine. It's not doing doing very well. What version is Bun? Bun was released last year. 1.1.26, right? 952. And a total of 24 millisecond. Oof. Oof, Bun. Oof. That's a lot. 24 milliseconds. Go ahead. I still did. Okay. I think that's that's all of us. Now, how about we do what everybody wants now? Clear the cache and let's do read dot out. What does read dot out might say? Again, bun is also when we execute the bun, same thing. We're running bun as a program, which runs bun as a process, and in itself it might spin up threads, who knows, right? But now, same thing with Node, same thing with Python. Now, what we're doing? We're running read.out, which is the compiled version of read.c, directly, directly, with three R's, directly. We're running it directly. There is no intermediary. There is no interpreter. There is nothing of this mumbo jumbo. Nothing. So we're running all of the stuff. How are we doing? Is it faster or slower? Look at this clean. We're getting zero, zero. It is so fast that it's not even, it couldn't be measured in, in the six decimal degrees, right? It's so that, so it's less than microsecond. It's in a nanosecond. And a very handful number of calls, 47. Again, I could probably re re rewrite it and make it a little bit more performant. A lot of people can. But yeah, read, doing two writes, a couple of writes. Again, I don't, I cannot explain why you were writing. But yeah, write, in this case, guys, it doesn't mean always write to disk. We, uh, we could, we could pop probably writing to the file system metadata, you know? 
So that's that's what I want to understand. I, I cannot explain this now. It could be writing to my uh, file system metadata, could be doing other things, right? So that's where we need probably to investigate more. And I uh, I did not investigate any of this stuff, right? So we called new F uh, stat file system five times. To me, to, why do we read the file system? If I'm reading the file, why do I need to know how big is the file? You know, you might say, oh, I'm going to read you need the stats so you can i don't know check permissions or probably uh check how long when to stop right can you write it like okay just write until you get an end of file eof and stop you can write it that way so that means this what the, the chat gpt wrote the worst version we can ever probably dream of right so yeah that's what i want to talk about guys isn't this stuff cool? So play with this. I love this stuff. Just just go and and uh, just run your favorite program. See how many system calls it makes, you know, and try to minimize that. Because one thing that I'm I'm 99% sure of it, and I can't find the answer online, right? Because maybe it's so obvious. Every system call that you make, let's say you have five system calls that consequently you're calling them, right? If I make the first system call, we do a kernel switch so we can, we can be elevated and access all the kernel goodies and access the kernel code, of course, right? Which is not accessible to the user, right? And then do our stuff. But then I return. And I, now I, I return. What, is that, what, what happened when I return from this first system call? Does the kernel switches back to user space? I think the answer is yes. Okay? And I'm telling you that maybe that is not the best way of doing things, right? Now we're discussing kernel implementation here, right? And some people might call me an idiot here because I don't know much. But look at this. Continue. Let, let, me, let me finish my thought. Now I go back and I call the second system call. Let's do it. I'm, I'm in a loop. I'm reading, right? So now I'm killing the second system call. Now we have to switch again to kernel mode and then come back and then switch again and come back. So five system calls equal five kernel mode, user mode switches, not context switches, right? Yeah, we, we might get interrupted in the middle and do an actual user space context switch to another process or preemptively involuntarily kicked out because you talk too long. That's another context switches, right? Or do a CPU migration, which is even a different thing. Like, yeah, you can continue running, but not on this core go into other core, right? Which, which of course, takes another hit. That's why kernels are so complicated, right? So now, why don't we do this? And I'm, I'm just, you know, thinking out loud. Why can't from the user space say, hey, kernel, I'm about to execute five calls. So be wary that, hey, these are the five calls I'm going to execute. Go and run all of them at once. As opposed to, dun, 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 we do a batch. This is not something new, right? We patch, hey, these are the collection of system calls. Go run them once. So we do one kernel switch mode as opposed to five. Just an idea. It might not, because I don't know much about kernel development, I think there is a lot of history that this might not be possible. Can you invent probably a new system call you do once that does so much? Probably, yeah. Right? As opposed to, that, that's one way to do it, I think. But of course, it's easier just to just do a system call pair context switch. Right? So yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one. And uh, take care.